in our class, we are going to read and understand a piece of text by writing annotations on a text. So we've been working with annotations, the way that we write on a text, all right, and we get our thinking through it. So if we look at our annotations up here, we can see the things that we're going to be working on and why we do it. So we really want to focus on this text that we're doing and we want to make sure that as we're focusing on the text that we're understanding what we're reading. That is the basis of annotation. When we look at our annotations, we're going to be doing some focusing on this text and the focusing is going to be on the character traits, the qualities of the characters that we're going to see today in our writing, I mean in our reading. And so we know that those traits influence the plot. So we're going to look at how are the characters influence the plot and what is their trait, their personality. Okay? It could be mental, a moral trait, or a physical trait. We are going to look all right, at the story and we know that we have the ancient Greece on this side and we have the modern day on the right hand side. You're going to read the ancient Greece side, the story, and what I want you to do is I want you to turn it over and I want you to read it first. And I want you to circle any confusing words or unknown words that you may have. Now, before you start that, I want you to remember that circling is great, but remembering to annotate in the margins what are you thinking about that word? What do you see with that word? So you're just going through and you're circling any confusing or unknown words or phrases. All right, you may begin. circle that word because there are things that, you, that are in the sentence that will help you first. So let's just look at that. So, so then, and then annotate it here. So what are you, like, yeah, what are you thinking that, that that word might be? you think that? Because you ended up walking instead, but ended up, so let's say, on the other hand, ended up walking him. So what did he do before ending up walking with him? What was he trying to do? He was trying not to go walking. Okay. Now, I am seeing that many of you are have circled those confusing and un unknown words, and you have decided that one of your resources that we've talked about is this dictionary that I can go to. Before you open that dictionary, okay, I want you to think about what we've been doing when we don't have a dictionary near us first. Because the dictionary is kind of our last resort because you're not always going to have that dictionary right at your side. So what we're going to look at, and I'm going to show you in a minute, is how to use those context clues. I circled that word dissuade, all right? It was something that when I was reading it, I wasn't sure of the exact definition, but I wanted to use some of the context clues. So I want you to look at dissuade. When I looked at dissuade, the things I had to do is look at the sentences around to get a context of where we are. So I saw that we were with Paris, okay, and that Paris was going to be going somewhere. So I had to figure out where is Paris going to. He's striding off towards Troy. So I know he's going into the city of Troy. And he's going to an athletic competition. Now his father comes up, I see, and he's trying to dissuade him. So I know that he's doing something. Okay, he's doing something. So when I look at the words, I first think, what is it? Is it a verb? Is it a noun? Is it an adjective? What are they doing? And here, he's doing something. It's a verb. So I know that the father's trying to do something to Paris. All right. His father tried to dissuade him, but ended up walking with him to the city. It was the first time Paris had set foot in Troy. 
So I'm using that context. His father is telling, doing something with Paris, and it's his first time in Troy. Talk about what do you think this dissuade is? What is the father trying to do, and why is this important to Paris? Because this is the first time he's going to Troy. So like that's why she did it. Uh huh. And it's like not trying to make him do something, but persuade is trying to do something. Yeah. Uh huh. And then also that it's uh that he tried to dissuade him because uh he was supposed to be dead and not alive. And Priam's going to see if he's alive. Mm hmm. And that he doesn't want he didn't want him alive because he was the one that was going to set fire to Troy. I think that's why he wanted to dissuade. Would someone like to add on using the context around the word? Sabrina. Me and Nicole, we talked about, we think that it means his father, his foster father did not want him to go to the city. And we used um, the word ended up walking him to the city, so we thought maybe it was the opposite. His father didn't want him to go to the city, but they ended up walking anyways. Isabella, do you agree or disagree with what Sabrina said? Can you explain and add on if you'd like? Um, I think she's right because uh, when you do some of the context clues, maybe the foster father he was trying to stop him from going into Troy because, as it was said earlier in other episodes, that the that if he walked into Troy, that it would be chaos. So they were trying to get rid of him, but he's still alive. And the foster father was trying to stop him. Okay. And again, looking at that that big idea at the beginning of this book, the. The quote that we brought out was, this child, who is Paris, will bring fire and ruin to Troy. And so you brought that into the context. These are the things you write in the margins, these ideas, so that you remember them when we're in our discussion. What words or phrases does the author use to tell you how Paris did in the competition? I want you to underline those words or phrases. Do you see, as you're scanning this text, the word competition? Point to that word for me. All right, so you're going to, because that competition is right there, that's probably the paragraph that it's going to be in. So as you're reading that paragraph, think about how Paris did in this competition. Why did you underline that? Because it says past them, well, that means, like, Paris won the match really quickly. Okay. Give me the evidence. Go back in the text and pull out the evidence that states these feelings. Adrian. Infuriated, they decided to kill him. Infuriated, they decided to kill him. Why did you underline that? Why did you pull that out? Because and it's, how, it's how they're feeling towards Paris. And what, is, what, what word is telling you how they're feeling? I want you to go back into the text. All right? And I want you to think about traits. We've talked about what's happened at this competition. Go back into the text and find the evidence. Think about what is a trait you can give Paris and the princes Based on the evidence, what is a trait you can find and what's the evidence that supports that? Strong evidence. Um, he began the competition by entering the boxing contest and to the surprise of all defeated Priam's son. So that, I'm just going to put the start of that, but began the competition in a boxing contest. How did that influence the plot? They got mad at him because he was defeating them and they wanted to kill him. Let's go back and make sure. Have we 
really looked at the things that we were going to focus on. I want you to give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if we've done the things. Let's talk about it. Did we read and understand a piece of text by writing annotations? Okay, I'm seeing mostly yes we did. Put, putting it down, I know, so eager. Did we focus our attention on the qualities of a character? Okay. Did you annotate the text for evidence? 